Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Beth Chats Books. Now today is going to be a Christmas slash January haul and it will include some books so it's basically a book haul and a little bit extra. And so some of these things I was gifted for Christmas and then some I ordered with Christmas money and other bits so it's basically a Christmas book haul. So I'm just going to get straight stuck in with this one. So the first two books I want to show you are books I was gifted for Christmas, one by my sister and one by my brother. So the first one I want to show you is the book I got gifted by my brother for Christmas. So this is Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen and this is a Chiltern Classics edition. So they are stunning, they are these beautiful hardbacks but a kind of embossed foiled um, and they have the kind of gold leaf ends and it has a nice little tab bookmark that goes into the book. I don't actually know if this came with it actually or if my brother bought me this because um, this was just in the book then and I just have a feeling that maybe he actually bought this separate from Waterstones. But yeah it's a cute little bookmark anyway. And I quite like this because it's written in an easy way so the spine is already kind of easy to access and the pages are very um it's hard to describe the material it's not like brittle pages they're almost silky and the font is quite good and easy so i have watched adaptations of sense and sensibility but i've never read it i read earlier this year pride and prejudice and loved that i actually listened to that on audiobook I think from the library but I have a copy of Pride and Prejudice anyway I listened to it and loved it so I will read the physical copy at some point I have a um, Penguin basic classic edition but this is absolutely stunning he knows how I love collecting pretty classics as I have a lot of cloth bound classics on my shelves in on my bookshelf behind me so I think this is just a stunning, stunning edition. So I'll link them down below because they have quite a few classics in these beautiful hardback editions. But for people who hate reading hardbacks but love how gorgeous a hardback is, I think this is a great compromise because it is really easy to read. And it's kind of already... The, the spine isn't broken, but it's already ready to access. It's not got that stiffness in the middle of the book. So I think this might be a winner for a lot of people because it's a hardback but easy to read like a paperback and obviously absolutely stunning design on this one so there's that and then my sister bought me character breakdown by Zwari Ashton now I really love this actress I love her in Fresh Meat where she plays Vod um, and that's the character she's best known for but this is quite an interesting memoir autobiography non-fiction because it is in a different style of formatting so it kind of has little bits of scripts that she's worked on and characters and then in between that there's text and I think it's going through her getting into characters and how she does that and it's a very artistic and creative format that she's used to portray this book. So it says, she has been acting since she was six. She has played many different roles from cute little girl to assassin with attitude, Oscar Wilde's Solomy to St. Trinian's schoolgirl by way of fresh meat VOD. So she is a, a very interesting person. She doesn't speak anything like VOD in real life, which I think is hilarious. But it, it has interesting bits of photographs and how she practices and, and really different things so I've never really seen a memoir quite like this where obviously she lives and breathes and identifies as an actress and that is obviously heavily influenced how she set this this book out but it will be really interesting to read it and see what I get out of it because I have previously done bits of drama at A level and things like that and I do find um, theatre and art uh, and acting very interesting in character development so I think this will be really interesting to tap into. And then with some money I got a Waterstones voucher from my stepdad and I put it towards some books. So the first two I'm just going to show you a picture of because they still haven't arrived yet which is driven me insane but I just thought I wanted to film this anyway so I, I can't I can't wait for them to turn up 
before I show you guys all this stuff. So the first one is Your House Will Pay by Steph Char. And this was buzzing all of last year. I think it already came out in the US before it came out over here, but obviously it's had a lot of hype and um, I don't actually know that much about it. I feel like a lot of people have compared it to things like Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng and things like that. I actually obviously don't have the book to hand to blurb it, but I'm sure so many people have seen this buzzing around, but it's been on my radar for ages, obviously with the library services being shut and a lot of other things going on. A lot of these books I've ordered have probably been on my wish list for at least six months and I couldn't access them either on the online library services, on the physical library services because things have been shut and reservations are weird, where I couldn't find them on NetGalley or things like that. So I took the plunge and I've ordered them. So Your House Will Pay has been on my radar for a while and I'm super, super excited to get to it. And then the second one is Rainbow Milk by Paul Mendez. Now, a lot of booktubers have raved about this in particular. I think Eric Anderson over at his channel, which I'll link down below, I think he mentioned this book this year and said how important it was. I know it is about a black man and it's a coming of age story about his sexuality, but I don't know much more than that. Again, it's quite hard because I did not plan any research with these books, but it was on my radar for a very long time and the library has it but it doesn't have it as an ebook it has it at the actual library and reservations have been halted again because we're now in our second well technically third national lockdown and so the library services are stuck and it just got a lot of buzz this year and it's still being buzzed around about with different booktubers and I just thought it sounded so interesting so I really wanted to get to it. So those two I didn't do much research for but I'm sure I'll link them down below so you can go and um, find the synopsis for them but I'm really excited to get to them when they arrive. Then the next one I want to show you is The Mothers by Britt Bennett. So I have read The Vanishing Half in 2020 at the back end of 2020 in the last few months and loved it and a lot of people have said that The Mothers was phenomenal. Now I tried to search for this but The Mothers seems to have fallen off the radar and maybe in the next year they might bring it back out but I could only find this on Waterstones or on Amazon and I, I wanted to support Waterstones more than Amazon so I bought it from here but the library didn't seem to have it and I think because this is quite a few years older than The Vanishing Half and it's an American author. I think it just fell under the radar with accessibility over here in the UK. But I got it from Waterstones. A lot of people said that this is so good and so many people said in some ways it was better than The Vanishing Half, but I know it's a completely different story. So it says it talks about Nadia Turner, a 17 year old beauty, Luke Shepard, a 21 year old former football star, there, there's a pregnancy, do, 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 subsequent cover-up. Nadia hides her secret from everyone, including Aubrey, her God-fearing best friend. Soon Nadia, Luke and Aubrey are fully fledged adults and still living in debt to the choices they made that one seaside summer. So that's quite interesting because I listened to a podcast, What Should I Be Reading Next? Or What Should I Be Reading? Or what do I read next? I, off the top of my head, I can't remember, but it's got Anne Bogle, who is the, the lady that narrates the podcast, and I'll link that down below. And she mentioned that the power of the mothers is really compelling in this story. So I seem to think there was a, a feminine motherhood vibe in this book, which I might be mistaken about. I didn't realise it was about a, a romance and a teen pregnancy. But Roxanne Gay says amazing things on the back about it and I love Roxanne Gay. I need to read more of her writing as well. I'm really, really behind on Toni Morrison and Roxanne Gay who are two people I just really want to read all of their works so really need to get to that. But anyway, she says it's amazing and I loved The Vanishing Half and really trust her from that, how compelling she wrote that story and her talent for story writing. So I really, really want to get to this this year. Then I also have Exciting Times by Nazi Dolan. I don't know how to pronounce that. I know she's Irish, so I've probably butchered that because as we all know, Irish 
names are written in a completely different way than they are pronounced, so apologies. But this was buzzed about here in the UK quite a lot and a lot of people were comparing it to normal people and Sally Rooney's writing in general. So this is set in Hong Kong and follows an Irish girl in her 20s who goes out to do a teaching job there and it's all about her and her life. And I've heard really good things about it. I think this cover is stunning so it's a hardback but look how pretty the end bits are here with the yellow and the red i think that's stunning and it says here ava leaves ireland at 22 a bad paid job in hong kong teaching english grammar and then the people that she meets there i believe there is a romance element to this i feel like a lot of people have talked about there being a coming of age romance in here again i don't know that much about it because i don't feel like this has blown up in the way that it was anticipated it was going to. It's been on Waterstones' website all year round and people have been giving rave reviews, but I don't feel like a lot of booktubers have read this. Or if they have, it's kind of flown under the radar a little bit because I presumed people who loved Sally Rooney would just devour this and just talk non-stop. Maybe my little corner of the universe haven't, hasn't seen many reviews on this, but it compelled me enough and excited me enough that it stayed on my wish list for a while and then I saw there was some Waterstone sales going on and I had a voucher and so I ordered it so it looks like it's a very short hardback so it'll be quite quick and easy to get through and um, the font seems very very reasonable so there is that one and then the next one is True Story by Kate Reed Petty. I'm a little bit devastated because I ordered this and then I saw that Mercedes over at Mercy's Bookish Musings absolutely slated this book and that crushed me a little bit because I'm really excited about this but I did hear that the girls over at What Page Pod raved, Alice and Bethany raved about this book and said it was a really good romp and it was very similar to My Dark Vanessa which I still have on Kindle to read but they said that this didn't get as much hype as My Dark Vanessa and it should do. A lot of people have complained at how trashy the cover is and it's interesting because I vividly remembered this book because of this cover and I think it's because obviously it's trying to do the different genres here so it's like the horror and the romance and the prep and um the mystery, thriller and and things like that. But I think because of the way it's designed and I'd never seen anything quite like it, I had a mental picture that was very strong for this. And every time I was walking into Waterstones at the beginning of the year when we still could, it, it burned an image in my brain where I remembered it. So I think this is gonna get mixed reviews in general from people. You either get the response from Alice and Bethany that it's amazing or you get Mercy's response where it's just meh or trash so I don't know I don't know which camp I'm going to be in but I absolutely was compelled by this story and I know it's a bit similar to my dark Vanessa I think something inappropriate happens and we go through the time span of the character figuring that out and I've just noticed that it's, it's signed um, when I ordered these, I didn't realise I was ordering quite a few that was signed by the author. I don't know if you can see that there. Um, so I think this one's signed. Let me check if any of these are signed. No, this one isn't. I think another one in this collection is actually signed, though. So we'll see. But yeah, I'm going to get to that one very soon. Oh, I think it's this one. And then the next one I've got is Betty by Tiffany McDaniel. And I think, yeah, this is signed by the author and it says with bonus content. So let's have a little look. Yeah. So, and this was fairly um, well priced, I think, because it's a very big hardback. So, so this has blown up in the US and I can see that it was on quite a few people's favourite books of the year list. But it didn't really blow up here. But I heard amazing things about it. It just kept being on my radar and I kept watching and waiting for it. I wasn't successful getting it on NetGalley, so I just took the plunge and ordered it because I still really wanted to read it. So this follows the story of Betty Carpenter, born in a bathtub in 54, to a Cherokee father and white mother. I think it's like a family saga of her life. She's resilient, she's curious about the natural world, she has a love for her sisters, 
and it just seems like it's going to be a sweeping family story. It's definitely a chunker. I think it's, yeah, 500 pages long. But it, I just think the cover is absolutely stunning. And I just really am into these family saga dramas and these character developments and spending a lot of time with a family and I'm really interested in American novels about coming of age and I've read by accident quite a lot of, of American fiction that's dealt with coming of age in the 50s onwards and, and that time span in different generations at the moment they're just things I'm really enjoying and this ticked all those boxes so I'm hoping to get to this one very very soon and um, but very excited for that. So they're all the books I ordered from Waterstones. Then I ordered some things from Paper Chase, which is a website here in the UK for stationery. So I'm just going to go through those for you now. So I ordered myself a 2021 diary. It's a lot smaller than I anticipated, but it comes with a nice little pen. This is because I'm starting my course later on in the month. So I wanted to have a week looking schedule so that I could keep up to date week by week with what I'm planning. So it just has a week view on it and a few bits to put some notes. So I just needed a handy little portable diary. Then I ordered some sticky notes because I know when I studied my undergraduate degree that sticky notes were your best friend because if you read something that was really relevant to an essay you were going to do and you didn't put a sticky on it, then it was an absolute bugger to find it again. So these hopefully will really help me out when I am trying to get some things ready for my actual master's dissertation. Then I ordered a little calendar, but it's one that you can kind of put up on your desk and it has, let me have a little look, it has on the first page the overview of all the months which is useful and then it has each month blown up over two pages and then a little area to put the notes which I think is really useful because I need to have a physical calendar which I can see visually for when I've got deadlines to do so I thought that's quite useful because I can actually pin this up on a board I've got a cork board or I could just lean it on a desk and have that visually there the whole time then I just got a very, very chunky notebook. This was just quite cheap on the website and it's absolutely massive because I just wanted a notebook solely dedicated to research because I have quite a few notebooks that I use as book journals for what I'm reading. But I wanted something that was just purely academic and I could just keep everything in one place. My course is going to be over a few years so I just wanted one notebook, particularly for this year, but hopefully I can use it the whole time. And then I got this daily plan book. It's like a little hardback with gold foiling. It's very cute. And this is ideal for me. So it has a great format. If you see here, if I can just show you there, it has things like your goal for the day, the date, your bullet point tasks, the time frame, and then a bit of a breakdown of the day in in hours so that you can plan which I think will be amazing because on my days off if I need to get research together if I need to find certain articles if I need to pinpoint little bits then if I start writing them in these little daily tasks then hopefully it will make the job of actually writing the essay a little bit easier down the line. As an undergraduate I didn't prepare as much as I could have done and that is my goal going into this course, prepare earlier so that when my deadline looms I don't have that mild panic that I need to get it done now, I'll have done the legwork and made it easier for myself. So that is all my stationary stuff for my course. And then the last thing I want to show you is I ordered from Etsy before Christmas some things and they have finally arrived. So I ordered from Dreamy and Co, which is on Etsy, so I'll link that down below, some book covers. So they came from the US, so it took a bit of a, a long time and a bit of additional charges to get them, but they're finally here and I love them. So the first one I got was a wintery style one. It's very Christmassy. 
I'm absolutely in love with this and I think you can just kind of have it all year round. I'm planning to keep these on my book trolleys and I'm hoping in springtime to get a few succulent plants on it and I might at some point get some fairy lights booked. I wanted these because I think they look really cute on the trolley and I just I fell in love with the pattern design so there's this one. Then I also got this one which is kind of foresty, it's got foxes on it and rabbits and I just think that's really beautiful and they're such lovely material inside, they're really nice and well quilted so I was very very happy with these. And then I've practiced on these ones, I got another one, um, very cute with all the acorns and leaves, I've been practicing different styles of books to see how they would fit. So this is actually a hardback book from the library so it fits nice and snug. These are all really good sizes because I know online they're small, medium, extra large depending on mass market paperback or in the US they tend to have bigger paperbacks than us but here in this country a hardback, a standard hardback fits fine in these and so does paperbacks. And then the last one I got, I just thought was so cute with these deers on it and I just love these pastel colours. So I'll link them down below if you're interested, but just be aware this was an American company so it did take a while and I did have to pay additional shipping for these. But I'm sure they have different ones that are based in the UK if you would like to get yourself some. And again, I tried this. This was a paperback but a very chunky one so I was just practising different formats. And again, it fits nice and snugly into there. So... That is everything. Those are all my purchases that I got around Christmas and January. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll be back very soon with a brand new video. Bye now.